Bishop Nafise Ketua Lesangan Semenada tadi Kita uh, uh, hanya bersama kita Alhamdulillah uh, Bapak Fahrullah Bilma uh, Terkenal dan biasa dipanggil Abi uh, Abi Wilmo Panggilan kesayangannya Abi Wilmo <tuh> Dia orang Inggris, tapi besar di Australia Seperti yang tahun 70-an ya Dari Tangga Aceh Belajar banyak tentang Aceh Dan bisa berbahasa Aceh Masalah lancar, kawan-kawan yang mati orang Aceh itu boleh Boleh memuji Abi ya Sempat belajar sama almarhum Daud Berhe langsung suka dari sini pulang setiap akhir pekan ke Berhe di ilmu agamanya Alhamdulillah masih juga walaupun bukan religius pun tapi masih jadi nasional dari religius beliau bukan ahli ilmu agama although we are going to talk about something related to religion ya, yaitu uh, tentang cara Islam paling tidak seperti yang dipraktekkan selama ini dia aja nah, ini sebuah solusi atau sebuah masalah always welcome kemudian Abi Bilmot lama di Aceh dan menikahi orang Aceh Dan saya mengatakan beliau sebagai orang dari Aceh Barat Maksudnya <laughs> Orang Barat Perawakannya jelas Barat, tapi berhati Aceh Saya <laughs> jadi Aceh Barat Setelah tsunami mungkin banyak yang mengenal beliau Karena beliau menjadi pimpinan muslim Tapi setelah itu sempat kerja tidak di banyak kerja di banyak tempat bersama muslim tapi juga dengan Islam sendiri di Bangladesh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Australia, maybe UK first and then Australia and then sekarang kembali ke Inggris uh, antara muslim dengan Islam sendiri tapi sekarang beliau adalah uh, direktur muslim untuk kawasan Afrika dan di CKS di UK pulang dalam rangka acara keluarga sebenarnya Thank you. 
bersama dengan keburukan atau uh, ilmu dengan bangai <laughs> adalah, <laughs> adalah satu yang tidak termasuk syariah walaupun ditafsirkan demikian ini sakit yang penting kita fikirkan bersama itulah tujuan utama Allah syariah inilah syariah di Aceh sekarang inilah image yang kita dapat di seluruh dunia inilah aja, inilah aja uh, mengukur orang dan seperti saya kata sama Pak Saju tadi, ini melanggar undang-undang syariah sendiri. Umur berapa boleh tengok ane uh, campur? Umur berapa? Tahu? Ikut ikut kanun sendiri. Berapa umur boleh boleh lihat campur? Ada batas umur? Batas umur berapa? Baris dah. Saya tak tahu, tapi dia kata kanak-kanak tidak boleh tengok Tengok kan kanak-kanak So, orang yang buat kanun melanggar kanunnya sendiri Okey um, Jadi kita harus fikirkan Kalau syariah itu masalah atau penyelesaian Kerana pada siapa yang siapa yang bertanya, siapa yang ditanya, dan apa yang dimaksudkan dengan syariah, jadi tiga tiga elemen uh, di situ. Kalau di di uh, dan keempatnya apa peranan syariah dalam urusan negara. Jadi pertanyaan pertanyaan kalau ditanya syariah itu persoalan atau penyelesaian. Empat pertanyaan itu harus, harus, harus dijawab Bagi sebagian orang Syariah itulah satu undang-undang yang tetap Yang tidak pernah berubah Yang termasuk uh, hukuman yang, uh, yang, 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 uh, yang yang berat Dan kalau kita uh, uh, Kalau manusia itu tersilap Dalam segi moral Harus dihukum dengan berat Kerana saya tidak lah, I'm translating from English to English. So, uh, 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 this because the paper was written in English, so kita tidak mungkin kurang jelas. Maybe you can just, yeah. but I don't maybe use in English. Uh, maybe not everybody understanding. 
How many understand English? I think almost everybody. Yeah, <laughs> almost everybody. Yeah. You can do English. Okay, yeah. fine. Then it make it easy. It make it really easy. <laughs> <laughs> Different generation. <laughs> so you uh, or other people like perhaps Tariq Ramadan will see sh uh, Sharia in the terms of its wider, its aim and purpose. Apa maknanya dan tujuan dari Sharia? Bukan hanya sistem mengenai uh, uh, hukuman atas pelanggaran uh, moral. Tariq tari Ramadan menyatakan bahwa the application of Sharia nowadays is should be the priority given to social project founded on the principles of justice and pengikut sertaan masyarakat that's what sharia should be now any apa identity aja identity aja bukan bukan hanya islam islam sebahagian dari identity aja islam sebahagian dari identity nusantara tetapi aja itu is 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 economy Aceh is its ethnicity and jangan kita lupa ethnic di Aceh sepuluh Gayo and um, apa namanya uh, yeah. so bukan hanya Aceh saja yang di pesisir ini uh, uh, and its politics dari dulu sampai sekarang and its, it's sejarah and so Aceh jadi sekarang orang mau menyatakan Aceh is different because of its Islam Itu saja That's not the fact Aceh is different because of its, its culture, its economy, its uh, politics, its history Aceh has, a different, has, has its own history um, uh, And there are many things we can, we can talk about but I don't know if this is uh, So that, that is, that is uh, the problem and, Don't forget that Aceh was the uh, was the last part of what is now Indonesia, conquered by the Dutch. The last part. It, on the 12th of March 1874, New York Times said, for the first time, an Asiatic power has defeated a colonial power. This is when uh, Kohala, was it Kohala? Oh, uh, they came, yeah, came to Bandache and had to retreat. They were defeated by the Dutch. The first time, and then was the first guerrilla war in the whole of South Southeast Asia was fought for 30 years by by the Dutchies against the Dutch. But before that, don't forget, these uh, political boundaries were not there before. Aceh controlled most of Sumatra and Malaya, and still not Sumatra. It, it, Aceh, the the, the lead to the Aceh, Tanakarau the to the Aceh, Bera. Perak, Pahang, uh, Johor, Malacca, Tundu Malaysia. So if this boundary, Malaya, Aceh, Indonesia, is, is a recent invention. And you should read Benedict Arnold about in, in, invented the uh, uh, in, community. invention communities. Um, so uh, I think that we and, and when uh, and when that were led the independence movement in, in Aceh, with the promise from Sukarno that Aceh would have some istimewa in Sharia Islam, which was broken by Sukarno, um, his idea of Sharia was not the idea of Sharia today. He told me that yeah, they were prostitute, plagio, the Aceh zaman dulu juga ada. Setiap negara tercium dari dulu sampai sekarang mungkin the world's oldest profession is plagio. <laughs> so takkan tidak tidak akan tidak ada plagio di mana mana negara pun pasti ada di Abyssin ada di Mekah ada di 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 Medina ada everywhere there's plagio. You but of course it's not accepted by society. Abu Bradina awalnya tercium Mesin jahit, tapas baru soda, runok menjahit. Jadi tek luar pelok tu yang akan gua lakukan. Tidak terfikir untuk campur atau rejang. 
Men, ma, apa masalahnya masalah miskinan masalah uh, tidak ada uh, tidak boleh sebaca so beliau ini so itu konsep syariah menurut Jan, menurut, menurut Abu'i, bukan seperti sekarang dan ni ya, jangan ada pegawai negeri mabuk-mabuk di tengah-tengah kota seperti dia di BHC habis mereka itu yang yang Abu uh, uh, So the concept of Sharia in Aceh, and jangan talk about this kind of mudah and that girl. It means only one one event in the news. Um, so Darul Islam was more ethnic, ethnic nationalist movement, not a religious movement in in the in the uh, in the sort of in the sort of purely religious point of view. So this is just a bit of of historical background. But what? Yes, that's it. So, okay. Now, cara melaksanakan syariah di Aceh ini is really a serious issue. Because the canon seems to be founded on a very superficial understanding of Islam. A superficial understanding of the, of the, uh, of the Quran. And very conservative understanding of Islam. And it, it implies that Islam can only be, in, be implemented by force and fear. Is that the Islam that was talked by the Prophet? Does, uh, is, uh, and these are the questions that I'm asking. Is the Sharia con con concerned with personal sins done in private? As I mentioned to Saif Mutani, the two bulan and muda yang ditangkap di Sabah itu. Apa dibuat? Saya tak tahu. Tapi kalau dibuat pintu tertutup, negara dengan masyarakat tidak ada hak untuk campur tangan. Menurut Islam. Because apa? Apa sebab? What is the reason? Remember the time when, I think we said in Omar, or said in Muslim, I can't remember. Keliling Medina. And he heard a drunken person in the house. Orang itu pasti, memang mari. Beliau, kamu rumah, aku tangkap kau karena minum hamam. Jawab si pulang itu. Yes, I did wrong. But Khalif, you did three things wrong. Satu, kamu masuk rumah saya tanpa bagi salah. Kedua, kamu masuk rumah saya dari pintu belakang. Ketiga, kamu mengintai saya. Haram mengintai orang dalam Islam. Maka apa yang diwakilan itu anak anak perempuan yang 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 dikangkat dan diroh di diperkosa oleh sembilan laki-laki itu sebenarnya urusan itu kan urusan negara kan urusan. Because apa yang dibuat tertutup itu dosa antara mereka dengan Tuhan. So you what you have made you made private public. This is my understanding. Then, number, question number three. Does Aceh Sharia unfairly target women, the poor, and the marginalized? Because basically, who is being hukum under Sharia in Aceh? It's the poor, it's the women, and it's the, the marginalized communities. <coughs> and for me, my understanding, is Islam emphasizes dignity, compassion, relief from suffering, aid to the poor, protection for the vulnerable, and refuge for all those in need. This is what Sharia. Does the Sharia in Aceh challenge the dominant economic paradigm? Does it offer any alternative? And, and this is what he said, oh children, take your adornment and every Muslim that eat and drink, but be not extravagant. You can see what's happening in Aceh. <laughs> then, uh, this is uh, this what I would like to sort of stress now is the it misses what is called Sharia in Aceh under this category. Misses the holistic understanding of what, what Sharia is. They have uh, not uh, encompassed this multi dimensional approach of, 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 of Sharia. Because Sharia should take into consideration all people, women and men, economic, social, health, 
decent employment, rule of law, integrity, respect for human rights, representative and participative democracy, uh, cultural and uh, ecological respect for the God-given environment, and taking care of the environment for future generations. It is very strange to me that the two countries, two, the two uh, states or provinces in Southeast Asia, which have Islamic, so-called Islamic law, Kalantan and, and Aceh, are among the worst offenders in destroying the, uh, the tropical rainforest. And this is our duty as Muslims, under Sharia, to protect and preserve the environment. And a study was made during after the tsunami, which showed over a 30-year period, preserving the tropical rainforest of Aceh will give more benefit, will give about 5 billion more benefit than cutting it down and selling those trees and, and having rainforest, having a oil farm. There's greater benefit in preserving for future generations. So, so we have to protect the environment, we have to, and can we say there's justice in Aceh? Can we say there's no corruption in Aceh? Has it increased or decreased? What's happening? So, Sharia has to give sense that this is cardinal, this is fair, this is just. Is it doing that? Are we, are we, um, and um, Tariq Ramadan talks about seven human rights derived from the Makassi of Sharia. Civil rights, like justice, solidarity, economic rights, which mean the right to life, dignified existence, um, uh, 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 right to work, family rights. All of these could be, so these, a traditional one, if you talk to the Islamic scholars, this is the lima on the left there. This is the five, uh, they call deen, haya, mal, karama, ilm. These are the five rights that is traditional in, 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 in Islamic theology. But many scholars added family community, and Uraya, self-determination and freedom, and some, of 20 verses, and another half, respect for the physical environment, which I mentioned just now. And other scholars have had human dignity and fraternity, economic development, and even research and technology. So the Mahasid is not a static thing. But if you look, look at this, where is the, the uh, uh, you know, the karam? in whipping people in power. Where is the dignity? Manada. Because Islam is, is very important karam. The adila, the amana, the karam. This is three things which Islam protect under the shaykh. If you understand what is the shaykh. So, are we doing that in Aceh? Is, is our canon doing that in Aceh? I'm really worried. So, what is the objective? Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, this is uh, okay. So, if you, these are the traditional objectives, you you complete. And so, you've got faith, prosperity, life, wealth, intellect, and human dignity. These are the traditional ones. And so, by if you have these, you have human dignity, which is is, is fine. But then, if you look at the the the, the overall picture of Mahasid, then you have this these the, all these ones. Right to freedom of wish, <coughs> right to freedom of belief. In intellect, it means education. How come Aceh is among the worst education in Indonesia today? How come? Right to free expression. So you should be free to criticize. Wealth means right to private property, the right to work. You see, how, how high? 60% unemployment in Aceh among youth, young people, isn't it? Among youth, yeah. yeah. Among youth. 25% uh, overall. 25% overall, but among youth? Higher than that. Higher than that, okay. Then you have uh, right to life and security and self-respect. Right to family life, right to the child. Now you have 40% of stunting in Aceh. 40, it was before tsunami, 30%. Now it's worse. How come? Where is the Sharia So, the, 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 uh, see, uh, 
this is a, a measure that we in the development community use to talk about deprivation. Mm. And do you have enough food? Do you have water? Do you have shelter? Do you have health? Do you have education? Do you have enough energy? Do you have water and sanitation? I think 50, or 65, so 45% or 35% of Aceh, of people in Aceh, 30 to 40% of people in Aceh do not have proper sanitation. And the an incident of diarrhea is very high in Aceh. Do we have a, a good relationship with people? Do we have sufficient clothing? Is the is the is is, the, is there a, a prevention of violence? Do people feel safe? Do we do, do we have access to family time? Do we protect the environment? Are we allowed to give our voice? Can do we uh, do, do, does do people have sufficient time to relax? Or do women spend ninety percent percent of their time working? And men sixty percent of the time in the function? And do we have the right to work? So this is just uh, some ideas what we need to take into account in the right view. So, see, this is what we could look at as the objectives of the Sharia and human development. Faith, you know, Kaimana gives us meaning and purpose. Here. It gives us a spiritual connection with our creator. It gives us moral and ethical values. It gives us law, it gives us social solidarity, and prepares us for the Akhirat, which is our final destination. In our life, it should protect our life. It should protect our humanity, and give us health, a way, a way to, to work, a, a, a place to live, well, a decent place to live. If you look, uh, are people living this way? And to have self karam, dignity, self respect. So th this is what. And in the internet, it means we have to have the right to education. Everybody has the right to edu edu education. And, you know, we have to develop our capacity in all of these things. And then for our family, for our future generations. And <coughs> if, you, if you are poor, you don't have dignity. That's for sure. And do we use it properly? So if, for me, um, if we want to talk about Sharia, we should be looking at this big picture rather than the, what we're doing now, talking about punishing people who mind duty uh, or uh, uh, lucky lucky the from one that to be banned by. What a good better thing to do. Now, hispa, hispa in 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 in, uh, in traditional Islamic thing was the we, we call it wilayat to hispa. Mutasi used to have one function to keep the market clean, and I hate I do not see any clean market in Asia. So uh, you know that. So you know. I just, uh, I'm just, uh, sometimes I feel lost. Uh, 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 Asna, Asna Hussein has pointed out, some of, for some people in Aceh, it's for sure. They see it as, 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 as uh, 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 eliminate social deals. This will solve the social problems. I will get onto that a bit later. So some people in Aceh are welcoming the, the Sharia, the canon. Some people like it. They think we're going to solve our social problem by having Sharia. Other people see it in the opposite way. They see it as, 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 as an imposition. But I do believe that what has happened is really an imposition on women in particular. And how does Sharia, what is the, one of the fundamental principles of law? What is the fundamental principles of law? Can I tell you? If you if you are accused, if you are caught by the police and you're taken to the court, what is the presumption? Innocence. Presumption of innocence. In the Sharia courts, in, in the Sharia Hispa, is there a presumption of innocence? What happens when they take up somebody? What do they want you to do? Make up? 
They want you to mang, mangaku sa. They put also the. Are you allowed to have a lawyer? Do they allow you to to have somebody? Is that is that Sharia? Is that what Islam is about? And of course, penggunaan Islam untuk kepentingan politik is a big problem in small Muslim countries because uh, religion is a very emotive thing and politics talks in symbols. So when you talk in religious symbols, you are touching the emotions of, of Muslims. So it's, it, it, politicians find it an easy uh, uh, thing. When we look at, at the, the, the founders of this uh, Islamic Sharia and Aceh, they see it as way to influence future behavior. This, this is, they see they want to create a, 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 a better society. But will it really uh, do that? Does it really achieve that? I, I, I don't know what this is. Okay, I, I will talk, talk a, bit, a bit later about this. Now, if, if you, um, historically, if you look at the history of, of Islam, Sharia has not been a rigid set of punishments as it has been interpreted in the modern world. This recent, recent view of Sharia is very new. It's a 20th century view. And it started a lot because of the influence of, uh, of, of a certain understanding of Islam, which puts it uh, a rigid, this, this is fixed penalty, this is fixed penalty, this is fixed, which is not the traditional Islamic way. The, the ulama were not the servants of the state, but they were independent. Now it is the other opposite. So the Sharia limited the powers of the state. Membatasi kuasa penguasa. Itu Sharia dulu. Membatasi kuasa orang yang berkuasa. I won't talk about state because tidak ada konsep negara dulu. Negara is a very modern concept. Uh, this happened because of the, I think, the rigidity of Islam happened after Ibn Taymiyyah uh, was, was trying to fight against the, the Mughals. So it, it, this is, it, this, and it was okay, it's a valid uh, uh, thing at, at that particular time. So what happened was the flexibility of the Sharia was lost and it became rigid. And in fact, this is what's happening in the dunya sekarang. This is what's happening in, 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 in the world today. Civilizations, in the face of a threat, whether it's real or not, I think people like Javier Risk is raising un, un, um, what it called, uh, un, uh, raising fear, just like Trump. And I, I, I think, it, it, in a way, it's quite correct. Uh, you're raising fear. Raising irrational fear, <laughs> irrational fear, and <coughs> or even might be real fear. It may be real, may be real fear. In the face of a threat, civilizations cut down freedom, and this is what's happening in America and England today. They're cutting freedom. They're cutting down the freedom of speech. They're cutting the, they're, inter, they're they're checking what people do on the internet. So people are losing their freedom because of the fear. And, but this is the, but the freedom is the greatest strength of a civilization. If you look, what, when was the biggest translation of, uh, of literature from one civilization to another? It happened in Islamic civilization. And it happened in a very open society. And people were free to, 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 to give their different opinions. So 
this is the greatest strength of, 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 of you know of, of a civilization. When you ask a Muslim, do you like Sharia? Oh yes, every Muslim likes Sharia. But do they understand? Do they? What What do you mean? So if you ask somebody in in Aceh or Saudi Arabia or, or or Sudan or anywhere, you ask them, um, do you like Sharia? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, would you like to cut the hand of your sister if she if she had sex with a boy? Uh, they will think twice. So, Shadi is, is, is an ideal, but it's not thought through properly. And don't forget, in six, 600 years of Ottoman history, there was only one person stoned to death for adultery. Only one person. I'm not sure, I don't know the background to that one person. So, if we, if we look at that, I mean, then what are we talking about today? You're telling me 600 years, only one person bought Zina? Dalam kalau ratus tahun, dalam seluruh dunia, waktu mengkarat pemerintah itu, hanya satu orang buat Zina? Okay, very nice. So, I I would say it's very difficult, and Sharia cannot be imposed. When it is imposed, it's not Sharia. Well, it's by force. It's not sure. We can say, oh, that's God's law. But God's law is interpreted by human beings. Not by, it, it doesn't, the, as the Sayyidina Ali said, the Quran doesn't talk. It's the people who understand what is in the Quran. So, uh, I would, uh, Abu, Abu al -Fan, I, I suggest you read him, Khalid al Abu al He said this, Sharia as conceived by God is flawless. But it is understood by human beings who are not perfect. Regardless of how clear and precise the statements of the Quran and the Sunnah are, the meaning comes from a person and a human being understanding the meaning. But the law of the state of the of the uh, of the country, whether it comes, whatever origin, it belongs to the country, it belongs to the state, it belongs to the Nagar. So religious laws should not be enforced by the state. There's no rule for enforcing religious laws by the state. All laws enforced by the state are human. The canon of Aceh is human law, sought out by humans, trying to do, understand what the Quran wants. It is maybe correct, it may not be correct. But the state has no business enforcing this law. So the modern, and, and let's think, the modern nation state was established after the Treaty of Australia, after the religious wars of Europe. And what happened in, in, in that? You transferred the power of the ruler, the king, the emperor, to the state. So. You, now the state has absolute power. The state has absolute power. So absolute power belongs to who? Kwasa Mulla, Hak Siyama. Hak Omar. Okay, Nagara. So, kalau kita kata Nagara punya Hak Mulla, Hak Kwasa Omar, mana bagi saya dan sebagian orang, ini sejenis Chim. Because he the body was a mutna kepada Yusuf, kepada Negar. And he needs some five. Five more million. Five more million. Okay, I'll wait up. So, so this is, uh, I, I don't know, let me go through. So, what we need to do, I would say, this is my model for Sharia in action. Improve our spiritual capital, improve our human capital, social capital, physical capital, financial capital. So improve our assets. And then tackle the structural barriers to human development. Governance, human rights, justice, power relations, markets, infrastructure, and investment. Look at in the, in our dignity. Look at the family. Look at the community. And, and, and education, everything like that and improve our living standards. And this will develop resilience 
to vulnerability. So this is, if me, this is the, my vision for Shadiq Baji. And this is what I would say, let's ask our, our legislators in Haji, please think of a maqasid of development for Haji. So look at our improving our governance. The government at, at, at provincial level, at level is pretty lousy. Uh, do we have social justice? Is there a proper power relation between people? So let's look at all of these issues. Let's look at social social protection. Look at our vulnerability. So let, let's look at this as the Nahasi framework for development in action. And there is a problem in concentrating on punishment. I, I, I honestly believe it ignores the function. And some people say, because the politicians in Aceh can't give anything, they can't give good governments, they can't give development, they can't solve poverty, then all they can give is uh, a jungle. <laughs> so, so it's this way. If a country or society or community displays characteristics such as unelected, corrupt, oppressive, unjust rulers, inequality before the law, uh, your absence of freedom, all of it, if it has this, then it's not an Islamic community. And somebody did a measurement of uh, uh, the Sharia compliance. Not a single Muslim country is in the Sharia compliance list. But these 10 countries here, they're in, they're, they are more Sharia compliant than Muslim countries, yeah. including Aceh. So if you really look at Sharia compliance, this country, and they are not perfect. I'm not saying Western countries, they have their own problems. They have their own difficulties. You have the Trumps, you have all this uh, lack of democracy, you have the, uh, the, 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 the you know, injustice to the blacks, everything like that. But look at these issues, and these are the top 10. Okay. What is the situation of Aceh? It, income is seventh highest in Indonesia, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but it's poor promise. Eighteen percent below the poverty line. Economy is stagnant. Highest school dropout in, in, in Indonesia. Lowest academic achievement in Indonesia. Unemployment, corruption, environmental destruction is horrific. This is not yet under Sharia. Wow. Great achievement. <laughs> This is the forest in Nature. This is what, the, uh, where's the lapu? Uh, our prison here. See? This is, this was what it was. Oh, this one. Oh, this is Aceh. See? This is what Aceh was. I don't know. This is, anyway, the one on the left <laughs> is what it looks like now. Or what it did look like. It's probably gone back. This is the plan, the spatial plan that they want to implement. That's what's going to happen. It will destroy the problem. Forest of Aceh. This will destroy it. And this is one of the greatest assets of Aceh. And they want to destroy it. And it's supposed to implement Sharia. What Sharia do uh, but, but the power of Sharia courts is still strong. You can't challenge it. Because the Supreme Court of Indonesia, Makam Agung, uphold it. It's difficult. The punishments have been upheld by the Supreme Court. So it's difficult to challenge. I, I better finish soon. Uh, so, we didn't discriminate between Sharia and Fiqh. The use of this, this, this uh, discretionary punishments is dangerous. I don't believe there's been much issue really, honestly. And they ignore contemporary realities of our life. I mean, for example, forcing girls to ride side saddle on a motorbike is dangerous to their life. Yeah, Nankan. it's dangerous. Nankan style. What do you call? <laughs> Nankan style. It's dangerous to your to your safety. Yeah. It's not a safe way of riding a motorbike. Why do you want to insist on doing that? Putting the life of women in danger. And then this is the what what I see is 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 is, is a negative impact on on women. Humiliation, dress. And I found this ridiculous nonsense about talking uh, about uh, the, the no, Chukyadin? Uh, Chukyadin. Ch 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't care less that she worked for Lumon. 
whether he uh, hijab or not. It's not my problem. <laughs> and, 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 and she, I, uh, it was enough historical evidence to show she didn't. Why do I to make this a debate? When you, you've got the biggest level of poverty in Nigeria, you want to talk about this? The concentration, uh, you know, so this is, uh, and I want to show you this thing. This is prevalence of rape and sexual assault on women. If the ones in green is rare, the rape is, uh, uh, but the ones in red is high. And you can see that the countries with high punishments for, for rape and forcing women to cover, like, like Saudi Arabia, is high levels of rape. So, what did you achieve by doing that? <laughs> then the uh, Waha, Weha, you know all about them. And it is very dangerous to have community enforcement of Sharia because the Sharia should is enforced by the state, not if it is to be enforced, it is not by the community. And that's a very dangerous element in, in the in the Sharia Nacheh. And this is, I took a photo in Banache, outside Jabadan <laughs> and Kanton Nagama in Banache, when my son was doing his wedding. This is the Sharia of Banache, the Sharia of Banache. And there is sound hadith, the Brasina, But yes, we can whip people in public, but we can't clean the drains. So, and then just moral policy. Should we make the private sphere public? Should we forget that every verse of the Quran which says about punishment, malayan kan mereka yang berkata, mana ada keampunan, mana ada pemaafan, mana ada pembaikan dalam kanun syariat sekarang. And it makes the state, there's lack of chin, and, and it's a danger that we play the power of God. And, and I don't want to go, this is the history of, uh, of, of the Sharia and Anche, we can talk about that later. I think I'll stop here. And, uh, right. <laughs>